know everything that happens, man. My yeah. castle like, surprises me. Yeah, yeah please, that's true. Please introduce yourself to the microphone. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sarah Gamble. Hi, I'm Tom McEnroe. Any questions? Well, congratulations on season one, first. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. I mean, it was amazing the journey you kind of took them through. Uh, what are you planning for season two? <laughs> um, we'd love to get Billy Bush. <laughs> but but he's, uh, he's really booked. <laughs> yeah, was, it's the like, first thing out of his mouth all day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I just woke up like 10 minutes ago. Um, I, I mean, I think season two is, without giving anything away, I hope, and I'm the worst at this, but it's kind of a giantly disguised whodunit. <laughs> or rather, who's doing it. Yeah. There's stuff happening, and there's, a, there's more than just one kickback. And it's, I sort of, in my mind, is real breaking in the room, the writers. Only structure, not, not in terms of like tone or content or I kept thinking like the first how fun it is when you turn to that last chapter and you're like, no way! And that's what we hope this season kind of delivers. And that's it, that's the arc. Oh, of the arc of the whole season is stuff is happening in Hillary on Earth. Obviously, someone's responsible, and we play totally fair. It's someone you know. It's someone who's a character. It's someone who's been there from early on. Very early. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we talked a lot about um, Murder on the Own Express. And I forced people to watch it. They fell asleep. <laughs> so they still don't know the ending. <laughs> but it was, it was a, it was, I had a lot of fun this season. Yeah. Um, I think Sarah did too. It was really fun. We had, you know, we kind of got in a groove a little bit. Um, Incredible directors, uh, incredible writers, and the cast is rare in the world. So it's just, I think it would be a fun, dark ride. But, you know. I think it's going to feel bigger than, yes. than season one as well. I think at the very end of the season, we introduced Fillory and we got in there, and we are in Fillory a lot this season. It, it feels like a bigger movie in season two. Yeah. I like Fillory. I want to visit. <laughs> I, I, parts of I was so <laughs> nervous about Fillory until I saw the designs the sets by Rachel O'Toole and the set of the clothing design by Magali and suddenly I just everything we relaxed because it doesn't look like bad Robin Hood at all. <laughs> you know, it looks totally unique. It's just really interesting the design and beautiful and dangerous. Having not read any of the books, does season two follow along any of the storylines of the books, or are you taking the characters and the uh, We hit um, some highlights of the books that I think fans of the books will be excited to see. But our mandate in the writer's room is always to try to capture the spirit of the books and to be true to the characters. Um, you know, we started as, as much from the books as possible. Um, we definitely diverge from the books. By the way, with Lev's blessing, encouragement, mm -hmm. criticism along the way, um, it's been a group effort. But uh, I think I think there's there's stuff that the, the fans of the books will love to see. And then, by the way, you don't have to have read the books to get in. You can even start with the beginning of season two, I think, and you'll be fine. But just want to kind of go back and see season one. Um, but yeah. Well, I enjoyed season one in and of itself. Uh, Thank you. Uh, particularly, what what horrified me is the tragic hero of Julia. Yes. And having her, her reunited with Quentin, but then it was all shattered. Yeah. And that really took me for a ride. Did you get much of a response from the audience regards to that? Yeah. yeah. A lot. <laughs> I mean, I think. It's a very dark story for her, and it's the aftermath of that attack that we see in the season finale is something that we play out all season long. It yes. Not only is her goal to find and kill Reynard the Fox, who killed her friends and raped her, but we see the effects of that attack on the character and on the people around her who care about her. Um, 
and the nice thing about making a fantasy show is you have the entire like spectrum of psychological effects that you get to play and then you also get to embody some of those effects magically. You get to create monsters and um, demons and magical spells to kind of give voice to that kind of trauma. Um, so you guys brought Chris Fisher in um, yes. to work yes. on the show, and I'm a huge fan of his from Person of Interest. Sure. Um, and so, what's what's been working with him like? How is he integrating into the show? What is he bringing this season to the show? I mean, Chris is just such a uh, total filmmaker. You know, and he thinks about every single detail. Um, as material comes in, he has a thousand questions. If you don't have the answer, he does. <laughs> awesome. Um, and he's, he's both like kind of the best of a visionary and adaptable, which is very necessary for TV for the you know, kind of restrictions of budget and yeah. time. Um, and I think the cast really loves him. I think they really are inspired by him. So, yeah. We are. It's been really fun to grow material to him that we know he'll do something really fun with. Without giving too much away, we have an episode this season that's a magical bank heist. Uh, like, hey, that's Chris's episode. Yeah, Fantastic. Totally. <laughs> yeah, he's doing the first two, the bank heist, and the last two. Okay. So he's a big chunk. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And as a show. As a show. Yes. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys had the best party in San Diego.